Hello, this is a segment of large bowel and we're looking at the mucosal surface which is extremely abnormal and let me just turn this around to show you how we can tell this is a large bowel. We can see on the serosal surface that the tinea coli are visible. So let's take a closer look at the mucosa and you will note that it is carpeted with thousands of polyps. So this is what we get in a condition called familial adenomatous polyposis or FAP and in these instances these are all adenomatous polyps in other words they are neoplastic polyps and they would show a range of dysplastic changes from low grade to perhaps high grade dysplasia and also there is a very high risk about a hundred percent of developing adenocarcinoma. Here is another case of familial adenomatous polyposis and again you can see that the mucosa is involved by numerous polyps but in this instance there is also a tumour. So whenever we have cases of FAP we need to actually survey them and hunt for developing adenocarcinomas. Hence the management for these cases is early pancolectomy in order to avoid or to prevent the progression to adeno CA. Now let's have a look at another different case and here we have a segment of large bowel as well and we can see clearly that there is a tumor here. Uh, there's a fungating irregular tumor so this is adeno CA but if you look in this area you can also see that there is a single pedunculated polyp. So here is the head of the polyp and this is the stalk of the polyp. Let's have a look at what the polyp looks like microscopically. This is a very low magnification appearance, microscopic appearance of a pedunculated adenomatous polyp. So this polyp has been bisected and you can see two halves here. In this half you can see the head of the polyp and very nicely we are able to see the stalk. This area here is actually cauterized. This is due to the endoscopic removal of this polyp. So here is the abnormal dysplastic or neoplastic mucosa, which appears darker on low power because of higher NC ratios. And here is the benign non-neoplastic colonic mucosa, where um, it actually appears paler because of lower NC ratios. We're going to look at a higher power view. And here is the polyp and we can see that in some areas the architecture is fairly tubular. In other words, you can still see the crypts dipping down and um, if we have a polyp that is comprised predominantly of these areas, we would call it a tubular adenoma. However, if we have other areas that appear more finger-like, like in this area, and if that is the predominant appearance, we call it a villus adenoma. In this instance, we can see both a mixed architecture, hence we call this a tubulovillus adenoma. Moving on to a very high power view, this is a single villus, and uh, we can see on the left side that this is still normal colonic mucosa with goblet cells and with a very small and basal nuclei. However, there is an abrupt transition, and you can see that on this side, the nuclei are a lot taller, they are elongated and oval, and you can see that they are stratified. They are actually located in the middle part of the length of the cell or even approaching the luminal surface of the cell. So this is nuclear stratification. This appearance is still that of low-grade dysplasia. Usually in high-grade dysplasia, the NC ratios are even higher and the nuclei appear more rounded with prominent nucleoli. So again, we have the non-neoplastic colonic mucosa and the neoplastic or dysplastic colonic mucosa with low-grade dysplasia. And when we look at the deeper aspect of the polyp, we can see clearly that these are the abnormal dysplastic glands with the tall nuclei and these are the normal glands with the basal and smaller nuclei. So going back to the gross specimen, we can see that this is a colon that is carpeted with numerous adenomatous polyps with a development of adeno CA here. And these patients would have germline mutations in the APC gene and they are then prone to a double hit following additional mutations which results in these adenomatous polyps and also with cumulative mutations 
they are at very high risk of developing adenocarcinoma.